I want to talk to you about the seven biggest mistakes that people make when they start their own limited liability company or corporation without using a lawyer. Before I discuss these most common mistakes, I want to give you a little background about me so that you understand who I am and where I'm coming from when I begin to talk about these mistakes. I've been practicing law since 2005. I taught a class in minority entrepreneurship at the University of Texas at El Paso. I have law offices in three states. I'm licensed to practice law in multiple states. I was a C-level executive for a company with over 50 employees and several million dollars in annual revenue. At my law office, we like to say that we help influencers, entertainers, and entrepreneurs bring their dreams to life. So please believe me when I say that I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of want-to-be entrepreneurs. I meet a lot of entrepreneurs at the beginning stages of their ventures. Some of these entrepreneurs will meet with me and then decide that they're going to create their own venture without hiring me or hiring any lawyer for that matter. When they tell me why they've made that decision, what they usually say is that they believe Forming the entity is easy and that they can save the money to use for some other purpose, or they say they just don't have the money. I also meet with a lot of company owners and directors after they've been sued by someone, and the person who sues them is usually suing them in their individual capacity. And it's at that moment that those people tend to discover that they're personally at risk because the company did not follow the, the proper formalities. In the legal world, we call that piercing the corporate veil. Getting your veil pierced is a pretty big deal. It means that the court is allowing the other party to work around the entity that you formed or the entity that you're a part of and sue you personally so that if necessary, they can uh, pursue or obtain or go after your personal assets in order to be able to satisfy a judgment. After years of practicing law and seeing this happen over and over again, I just, I just got tired of seeing people make stupid mistakes. And some of you are just not going to hire a lawyer as long as you believe you can save money by doing it yourself. So I'm going to tell you about some of the most common mistakes that I've seen and hopefully you can use this video to avoid making those mistakes yourself. Mistake number one is the failure to make documents or operating documents, in particular, the failure to create bylaws or an operating agreement. There's more to creating an entity than just filing your formation documents at the Secretary of State's office. You are typically supposed to create a document that explains how the entity is supposed to be run. Now, if you're talking about a corporation, then that operating document is going to be called bylaws. If the entity you've created is called an LLC, then the operating document that you create is going to be called an operating agreement. And it does not matter whether your corporation or LLC has one person or multiple persons. You're supposed to create that document. It is shocking how many times I see people get sued and they don't have bylaws or an operating agreement. Or if they have one of those documents, it's something that they've copy pasted from the internet and they have no idea what's in the document. They just, they just created it or copy pasted it from someone else because they were told that it would be a good idea to have it. The smart move is to get your own document and understand how it works. Mistake number two is bad corporate record keeping. Certain decisions that a company makes should be recorded in the company's meeting minutes. But if you don't have meeting minutes or you don't have a corporate records book, then you can't go to the book to show others why you made a decision that you made. And this is a major problem if you're sued and you have to demonstrate why you uh, or the directors made a decision that you made. Let me explain how this plays out in the trial. When the opposing party sues you, they name your company, 
And then they name you in your individual capacity. And then they serve something on you called discovery. And for the purposes of this conversation, we can think of discovery as kind of an umbrella term that applies to certain documents uh, that, that require you to provide information. All too often, those requested documents include your formation documents, your meeting minutes, and your bylaws or your operating documents. And when you're not able to produce those documents, you increase the risk that the opposing party will be able to argue that you're not able to use the limited liability protections that you're supposed to get through the entity that you created. Mistake number three is commingling assets or funds. Sometimes people will use a business account to pay for their personal items. This is a major no-no. If you're in a lawsuit and your opponent can show that you use the business account to pay for your personal items, then they may also be able to convince a judge that you should have to pay for the business items with your personal accounts if you lose the case. Mistake number four is failing to follow formalities. In some states, you're required to hold an annual meeting, and your failure to hold an annual meeting can have significant consequences. Unfortunately, a lot of people have no idea whether they're supposed to hold an annual meeting in their particular state, and they don't know because they haven't hired an attorney, and they're just operating off the assumption that all they need to do is file their, their corporate formation documents to get their company started. Mistake number five is choosing the wrong lawyer. The decision to choose a business lawyer is one of the most important decisions any entrepreneur can make. And a lot of entrepreneurs make the wrong choice. In many instances, the entrepreneur avoids choosing any lawyer because the entrepreneur wants to save money. But in other instances, the entrepreneur hires a business lawyer who does not know anything about business. Sure, the lawyer may know business law and the lawyer may even own his own business. But that does not mean that the lawyer is an entrepreneur or understands the world of entrepreneurs. It also does not mean that the lawyer understands the life cycle of your particular business and how that relates to the services that the lawyer provides. Lawyers with true business knowledge and contacts are worth the fees they charge. Mistake number six is creating the wrong entity. A lot of do-it-yourself entrepreneurs create the wrong entity. They create a corporation when they should be creating a limited liability company. They create a limited liability company when they should be creating a corporation. Sometimes they don't create an entity at all when they should be creating an entity. The best way to make sure that you make the right choice when it comes to your entity is to meet with a lawyer and talk about your plan and goals for the business. Mistake number seven is choosing the wrong name. A lot of people choose business names that someone else is using. In many instances, this can be avoided by doing a business name search at the local level or the state level. Or if you have plans to create a business that is national in its reach, you can avoid using someone else's name by doing a trademark search with the trademark office. Let me know in the comments section if this information is helpful to you. If you need to speak with me, then you can find my contact information in the description. And please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you.